Welcome to the UFO Woman Show. I'm your host, Melissa Kennedy. And today's uh, episode is going to have my dear friend from West Virginia, but he now lives in Kentucky. And in fact, he's the Kentucky MUFON State Director, as well as a paranormal investigator and so many other things. He's a great guy, and I'm so happy to have him here tonight. Please help me welcome Barry Gaunt. Barry, hey, how are you, man? Hey, Melissa, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, Great sweetie. To be I'm good. Here. Yeah, same here. <laughs> we're, we're always talking on uh, the radio, you know. That's true. We're either talking on radio <laughs> or we're talking some, or on Facebook or somehow. Yeah, we but are. It's awful good to see you this morning. Same here. Same here. Um, my gosh, where do we start? Because you and I have some uh, common threads as well as uh, some other things that we could talk about, not only UFOs, that but is, paranormal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is so true. You know, we do so many different things as far as, um, you know, most of my whole life I've spent uh, through nothing but uh, the paranormal in every every field. And one of the things that I have uh, felt like and, and know that it's happening, and I'm glad to see some of the rest of the community is going towards it, is that they're all interrelated. They all have the same thing that's going on, and, they, and we all need to look at that because it's all part of that puzzle, all it part really of that is. gigantic puzzle. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, I get asked the question, well, you know, are you just doing paranormal or UFOs? I said, you know, honestly, it's all interconnected. It really is. And, you know, Ooh. one feeds off the other, and there's interlacings of topics here. So, yeah, yeah. why we do what we do, right? You know, and when, when we, uh, where we come from in West Virginia, yes, you know, the folklore is so steeped. And as children, that's all that they, we talked about. We listened to Grandma and Grandpa and all the old folks tell stories of things. And that's what brought us to where I think we both are today. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, and it's, you know, the Appalachian Mountains and all that area up there is still has a strange hold to us all. It, it does. <laughs> yes. Well, we, we both kind of grew up not too far from each other, uh, north, yeah. central, West Virginia area. Um, Correct. Yeah, that's, oh my gosh, you and I go way back in, in a lot of ways uh, before uh -huh. we knew each other. But uh, yeah, the Flatwoods Monster, you know, Grafton oh, Monster, yeah. <laughs> all this stuff, you know, it's it's crazy, man, it's crazy. But uh, oh, I'm just so excited to finally have you on my show. I've been on your radio show, what, twice? Twice, exactly. And yeah. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Thank <laughs> you so much. Absolutely. Tell, tell the folks what your radio show is called and where they can find it. Uh, you can find the radio show into the far, uh, and, and notice the far part is kind of like West Virginia. I still can't talk like a darn <laughs> <laughs> but it is called Into the Far, and it is on blogtalkradio.com uh, forward slash Into the Far. It's every Tuesday night, and it is on at uh, 8 p.m. And Eric Mitchell uh, and myself uh, host that show. And, and we tried to do a two-hour show, and we kind of do it like it's in our living room. You've been on it before. And we cover a lot of deep subjects, and uh, we just have fun with it. As, oh, as as absolutely. absolutely. And, and get this fun. great information out to people, you know. And, man, right. you, you set us off on a whole, whole new path with your books. And talking about uh, RH and blood and everything else. Oh, I know, <laughs> I know, the RH name. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was fun. I talked to you yeah. for three, it was a three hour show, wasn't it? Yeah, it, did. it was. Yeah, it so was. Cool. We, we just kept going. <laughs> we just kept going, kept going. <laughs> it, seemed like, it seemed like a 20 minute show. It, it really did. It really did. I looked at my clock, I was like, dang it. Time's up already. All right. Cool. Exactly. Well, yeah. I gotta I gotta mention something that I saw in the background uh, of, of where mm -hmm. you're sitting right now. It says don't wake the bear. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> your bear. Your yeah. bear. Yeah. So, bear is always awake, unfortunately. Yes. And everybody keeps always. on telling me to slow down and do other things. Well, but, uh, that's you know, it's more like things. it should be it should be do, do not feed the bear. Yeah, but. or don't, don't, don't poke the bear. <laughs> don't, don't poke the bear. <laughs> right, right. Well, that's your nickname, Bear, but you also go by another name, which is the Kentucky Truth Seeker. That is correct. I've had that for a long, long time. Uh, when I moved to Kentucky, I've been in Kentucky now for 23 years. Okay. And uh, I needed to come up with something. I, I, You know, it's kind of funny. Back when, it's not like it is now. You know, you didn't want to really be, I try not to have any ego. I don't try to have anything. So I created this 
other personality so that no one could actually follow me around and everything else. Nowadays, I get the attention of a lot of different things, uh, black helicopters, <laughs> all that kind of fun stuff. <laughs> and back in the old Kentucky Truth Seeker days, but yes, I do use Kentucky Truth Seeker quite a lot. Uh, it's my uh, it's my Gmail uh, yeah, account Kentucky number. Truth and, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's something that uh, it's come along. And unfortunately, at one point, you know, when you're on Facebook, not to yell at anybody or not yeah. to say anything kind of weird on Facebook, uh, they do monitor you quite a lot, and for some reason, you see a whole lot of different names. Yes, but for some reason or other, they decided that they wanted to know who the Kentucky Truth Seeker was and sent me a letter saying, You better have really? a driver's license as Kentucky Truth Seeker, or you're going to lose your account. So that's exactly what happened. No way, I didn't know oh, that. Oh, yeah, no way. No oh, way. my yeah. gosh. Yeah, I got, I got my YouTube channel shut off, I got all that stuff shut your off. Your YouTube so channel was shut off, and oh, geez, hello, oh, yeah. censorship. But see, here at Weeby. TV, we don't have any of that. We don't have censorship, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Most excellent. <laughs> yes, yes, it really well, you, is. Well, you know, the, you know, we try to get the word out. We try to uh, enlighten people, uh, make them think about some things. I mean, it's just like you do, and uh, you know, with your conferences and everything else, which you do a yeah. fantastic job at. Oh, thank and, you. Thank you know, you. it's just, it's just awesome. So. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, let's dive in, my friend. I, okay, I'm, ready. I'm, I'm going in head first. You know, <laughs> <Okay>. I, <laughs> it is the UFO Woman Show, so I got to talk about UFOs. You are the Kentucky yes. MUFON State Director. Kudos for that, by the way. I know that's a very, very difficult uh, job title to receive. Uh, mm -hmm. You've been with MUFON how many years? Uh, I've been with MUFON back. I started with MUFON back in 2006. Okay. I've held very. Um, Several different titles. Uh, I was a DOI at one point uh, with the, uh, if you will, headquarter of MUFON. Uh, I have um, been through everything. I left MUFON for about two years, okay. and uh, then I came back to MUFON and took over the state director's position here in Kentucky, and I've had it since. Uh, I really enjoyed dealing with the people. I love my investigators. Uh, we do things, let me say, we're more boots on the ground. We have a great team. I really appreciate it. We work with others. That's one of the things that you don't see very much nowadays, uh, you know. Right. Uh, my my good, good and wonderful friend down in Tennessee, uh, Angelia Shear. And oh, I, yeah. Oh, yeah. We do quite a lot of a lot of stuff, and uh, it's just a pleasure to have people like that around you. I just did, I just had her on my radio check. She, she came out with a new book, and uh it's wonderful. It's a good thing. And, uh, you know, it's move on. Uh, and right now, uh, it is breaking wide in Kentucky. I don't know what you're getting down there in Florida right now. Uh, but we've had a lot of this stuff and stuff. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of it is linked to whatever Elon Musk is doing oh, with yeah. the Skylink. Everybody's seeing all that stuff. We have, uh, six, uh, cases uh, just on March 5th, uh, and finding out he's launched so many of these darn things and yes. putting it all together to find out which ones it is if it's not. And uh, so and a lot of people don't know about it. Oh, I know. When you when you mentioned Skylink to the average person, they have no clue what you're talking about. So for our no. audience that maybe doesn't know what we're talking about, you want to dive into that just a little bit and, and educate yeah, them on what, that? Yeah, what he's doing is putting up uh, uh, a network of satellites to provide internet mm -hmm. for everyone. Yes, yeah, Skynet, Skynet, exactly. Yeah. And it's called, and his company is SpaceX. Right. And uh, he's doing all this. And what happens is, is when you see them go by, they, he launches them, and they're not in orbit yet. So when they're going in orbit, they're just going like this. Yeah. And each launch he has will have a different orbit. So when you do this, when you look at it, you'll see a train of, like, several different objects all in a line and they just keep on coming and people are going, we're being UFOs, invaded. Yeah. <laughs> we so you're probably, a problem up here. Yeah, you're <laughs> probably getting phone calls and, hey, Barry, we just saw a bunch of UFOs. You're like, no, right. that's Elon Musk stuff. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we're good. Yeah, but, it, but at the same time, it always makes you wonder because some of the things that they report or some of the pictures that I've seen are totally different than what 
uh, the train looks like. You know, you can go to YouTube and, and put down Space Link yeah. and look at what a, uh, a Space Link train looks like. Uh, they've, they've put quite a lot on the YouTube channels now. But uh, it is causing some different problems. But when you get, you know, I have some of these reports are saying they're going in different directions. Some of them are saying that they're merging into others. So that's when you have to look at it a little bit different and you have to say, okay, right. And if you're only seeing five to 10 of them, it's okay. If you're seeing 50 to 60 of them, yeah, yeah. chances are you're going to go saying, well, that's SpaceX. Right, and that's that SpaceX. Skylake. Yeah. So is that part of what your job uh, is as the Kentucky State MUFON director, is you, you take these uh, reports and, and you investigate them? I'm just trying to bring our audience up to speed. I know what you right. do, but well, it, I want to tell it, people that don't know what you do what, what it is that you do. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, uh, as a state director, I have a lot of different responsibilities. And one is to increase the membership in the area, hold meetings, to inform people about what's going on in Kentucky, what's going on elsewhere, mm -hmm. and bring awareness to uh, the UFO field and also MUFON. One right. of the things that I also do is train investigators, bring them on, and work with them hand on hand. I've been doing investigations for a long time, and I've uh, been a certified MUFON uh, investigator since 2006. I have been a star team member uh, since 2008 when it first started. So I've, I've been a lot of different investigators and on a lot of different investigators and I am a strict boot on the ground type investigator. I don't sit behind this desk all the time. I'm always out going to the places so I can see and talk to these people face on face. And that makes a big difference. So I take my investigators with me and we, we work on how to do the correct investigations and so forth. And then uh, I also do publicity stuff just like this. Yes, <laughs> I get yes. to talk. <laughs> I love it. Well, I, I want to go UFO hunting with you. I mean, what? I would I would love to have you. And, <laughs> I want to you know, sign up. <laughs> uh, it's funny we do a lot of uh, different things, and uh, uh, I know we'll probably talk about Octagon Hall here, but uh, yeah, we will. One of the best places to watch sky watching. You know, we have a three hundred acre facility there oh you have 300 uh, acres around that yeah. i didn't know that yeah uh, you know we, wow. we take care of about 10 acres of it and the rest of it is uh put out for uh sublease to farming farming oh, but okay. uh at certain times the farms uh it's not active you know like right now right it's right. a great time to go out and look at the sky and it oh is my gosh i'll be up with my camper I, i'm gonna come up and i'm well, gonna go <laughs> UFO hunting. You just and come on. I'll ready. come on up. Okay. <laughs> we'll have a sky watch. No problem at you all. You all heard <laughs> that. He, he, he invited me up, so I'm going. <laughs> yeah. Anytime you'd like. You know that. Oh, Doors always open. Thank you so much. Well, my gosh, let's let's look at some of the uh, footage that you have sent us with some UFO um, photos and things that you have uh, that mm -hmm. you sent over. I want you to take us through the different photos and what it is that we're looking at um, with these UFO photos. And then if we have time, we'll talk Talk about some other things. So right here, what are we what right. are we looking at here? What is this? We are. I, I can't looking, see it. So yeah, we're looking at. Uh, there's like an arrow. You've got a uh, couple of pictures that are blown up. Oh, okay. That know? is actually. I've got it. What yeah. actually that is is that is a photo that I was uh, I was back at the back field of Ottingen Hall. That field is one of those fields that I'm talking about that. that Part of the 300 acres. Very unusual thing. It sounded like a ripping sound. You know? Oh, wow. And so with this sound, I immediately turned and I had a camera because I was taking pictures of some damage that was out there due to uh, a storm and we wanted to, I needed to get those pictures. And all of a sudden I hear this zzz, like that. Wow. And I quickly turned around and this thing just like goes poof. And I happened, I just quickly grabbed my camera. I didn't even really focus on it. I didn't do anything. I just went, ding, 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 like that. Wow. <laughs> and I didn't get it. And it was moving at an incredible uh, speed. What's unusual is the direction of it. If you look at it, it looks something like uh, 
something out of Star Trek. Yeah, or, I was going to say Star yeah. Trek or something. <laughs> Sci-fi yeah. movies are coming in my head here. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and what's, what's so weird about it, it was only there for a, a second. I mean, it was moving. Wow. And the odd thing about it is is that what looks like the front of the craft yep. is actually the back of the craft. Oh, and it kind of has a so, pointed look. It looks like it went Right, the front, right. Like the it end goes. of it is yeah. more pointed. I mean, so that's when you look at it, it looks like it's flying this way. It, looks, it should. I mean, to me and to my mind, I go, yeah. wow, it should be shaped that way. That's cool. But no, it's shaped the other way, which is which is really weird. That's cool. Um, well, you you sent us another picture that I really like. That was a V shape. It has lots of different colored lights. Let's yes. talk about that because that reminds yeah. me a little bit of the Phoenix lights that I saw back in 1997. It's very similar in the shape. Tell us about mm -hmm. this picture here. Uh, that picture is off of a video that was sent uh, to Mufon. It's a Mufon case that was up in. Uh, Cave City area, right above Mammoth Cave, and uh, they had an excellent video uh, of it. And I took the uh, pulled that out of that video because it was the best picture I could take of the craft. Uh, silent, nothing um, major. It was about uh, three hundred. They say three hundred feet away from them, uh, at about an eighty degree. Uh, and I'm sorry, a sixty degree angle. Uh, above the horizon okay uh, but you know i thought wow what a special shot that is and it's a really good one uh, you, you, you have know, any idea how the speed that it was going or uh at the actually at that time and the reason why the picture is kind of like it is it stopped and hovered oh okay that's why he was able to get you know he, he's filming it and then all you see is like the camera yeah you know go Foop! Like that, and at that point when it did, uh, which was uh, amazing at the time, uh, you've seen, I don't know if you've seen so many uh, videos, what happens is, is people are using it like this and they're moving it like this, so it makes it look like it's moving anyway. Yeah. But when he's watching it, it comes and it goes like, almost goes, and there he is. It gets that, and, and then it goes like that. So it did hesitate for a minute to go like that. So I always enjoyed that picture. Wow. I've got so many of them, and unfortunately, you know, I'm like, oh, what, what do you send? What do you send? And then finding them because I move them around a lot because I do have problems with certain things. Yeah. Trying to take those from me. Right. <laughs> I hate to well, sound paranoid or anything um, like that, but yeah, you yeah, know, you like going. No, I, I, you're not being paranoid. I totally understand. Things just mysteriously disappear. So let's talk yes. about this one. There's the the red and the green lights. It almost looks like a flower or something. What what is that? Um, I gotta remember that. It's got I mean, the red and the green. It's uh like oh yeah, four. Four, four, four lights. Yeah, looks like a yes. four-leaf clover. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That was seen uh, in eastern Kentucky, and uh, it was uh, again uh, a moving a craft that was taken from somebody from a car. It was a video again. Some of the things about you know what I like about being able to get the pictures from this is not actually still pictures. What happens is that you can create a good picture off of video because as they're doing the video, at one time if something happens to the craft or moves, you've got different options to be able to take. And then at that time, I can pull it out of that to be able to actually see what the heck's going on. Well, my and, my question then for you mm -hmm. as the state director, what what's some of the guidelines that Mufon gives you to investigate these videos? Or, or photos, you know, something that would differentiate it from, you know, a, a fake one or... Sure. How do you sure. do that? Uh, actually, MUFON has its own uh, people that will look at videos mm -hmm. and be able to analyze that. Uh, here in Kentucky, sometimes those people are very busy. So we have our own, and I bet my own... Uh, companies that have been doing video for a long time, and I have them look at it to tell me what it is. So that, you know, it's part of the things that you set up as your network to be able to do uh, the kind of investigation you want, because you do want to definitely be able to uh, downplay videos. You know, the, the only bad thing about it is, and people go, why don't you post more on things when you get these videos? 
Well, what happens is, is there's been a lot of good evidence that goes to waste because of the fact that there are so many armchair quarterbacks sitting out there <laughs> behind the computer. They're looking, and if one person says, that's fake or that's CGI, yeah. there is a whole horde of or a million of people that don't. That They're skeptical. Oh, right. yeah. I believe that. That's. I mean, if I mean, if I told you that the sky was moon and full of and blue and full of cheese, they would be going, "He's right. That's right. Exactly." Yeah. Output. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it damages your credibility as a state director, it, and I it, understand it does. that. You, you it can't does. put it does all your evidence it. out there because, like you said, there's going to be somebody that comes along that's uneducated, uh, and then they're not knowledgeable yeah. about what we're talking about, and yeah. And especially well, social cool media. Th- I mean, yeah. social media is disastrous. You oh, get, it's you get disaster. one bad comment, next thing you know, you get a hundred bad comments, and you know exactly. your reputation gets ruined. So I respect well, that. I respect that a lot. You um, know, the thing about it is, is one of the things that let me just cover that real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. please. One, one of the cool things that we do is those meetings I was telling you about. When we have a meeting, that allows us to be able to talk about all the cases that we close. We we protect the immediate. Uh, the identity, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> of our uh, sources and our witnesses. Uh, but we do talk about the cases and we how we uh, came about it and how we determined what it was, whether it's an unknown and identified object and so forth like that. So, but all the states have meetings. So if you're in a state and you want to go to a meeting, this is where you can find the way that it is, uh, you know, and the state director has that choice to be able to make those uh, calls. And I, I do it all the time. I like people know this is what we've done. This is what we're working on. Can't go into it too much. This is what it looked like and explain to it. So Yeah, I, I hear you. Hey, buddy, cheers to uh, some meetings and uh, full disclosure, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, Oh, my gosh. Okay, we have, I think, another picture or two to discuss um, before we okay. head into the paranormal. So let's look at this, right. this one here. This looks like angel wings or something. I don't know. It looks like uh, Darth Vader's ship or You're something. not going to believe this one. This is one that I actually uh, actually took myself. And this, this was in... Uh, uh, I was out having lunch uh, in uh, Woodburn, uh, Kentucky, uh, with three of my friends, uh, Billy Bird uh, from Mottingham Hall, and uh, another gentleman was with us. And we were sitting outside, and beautiful day, looked up, and I go, what is that moving in the sky? And I just happened to have a camera, so I ran and got it, and I took those pictures. I took a set of them, and I could see it moving away and everything else. I don't know what the heck that is. We, I tried to find more and more information about it. It looks like almost like a V. Uh, all I did know it, it had maneuverability. It wasn't mm-hmm. following the wind. It wasn't following uh, it directions like that. At one point, it actually turned this way. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the way that I caught it, it's sitting. It's sitting at this angle. Oh and, wow! You know, a lot of times. And that's when you have to call in another person. You know, I've got other investigators and say, please come and investigate my case because when we're out in the field, sometimes we become a witness ourselves. Right. We're out doing something and we don't do our own cases. So I have to have someone else be able to look at that and say, hey, hey uh, you're right. This is what it is. Well, because I, I, that picture right there, I mean, it kind of reminds me of a cloud in a way. It and- does. You know, we, we know that they can cloak as clowns. Uh, clowns. Yes. Clouds. Clouds. <laughs> clowns. Clouds. <laughs> oh, you know, it's all the same. Hey. Yeah, and I got, a, I got a fear of clowns. You have a fear it's, of clowns. It's crazy, but I have a fear of clowns. So. You're not scared of uh, intergalactics or extraterrestrials, <laughs> no, but you no. are scared of clowns. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, if there is an intergalactic clown out there, don't intergalactic come to clowns. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that? A movie or something? It I don't should know. be. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love that. That's unfortunately great. I won't watch it. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna watch it. You're scared. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right, that's too funny. Well, anyway, 
<laughs> so that that was pretty cool. I mean, I, I'm seeing some Star Wars looking ships in that picture. It kind of looks like a, a cloud. It looks like an angel. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting picture. It, so. it is, and that's where it has to stay because it's unknown. It's I don't unknown. know what it was. It was maneuvering, and it was in, in a, it was actually going against the wind. Oh, against uh, the wind. Oh, yeah, the okay. wind was what the wind was going uh, coming from the southeast, and it was going. I was sitting straight on 31W, and it was going uh, totally south. Wow. All right. Cool. So, well, let's yeah. look at your last uh, UFO photo real quick. Let's sure. take a look. Okay. Let's take a look at that one. Oh, that was it. Okay, never mind. That okay, was great. it. Sorry about that. That was the last one. All right, well, that's cool. What else can you share with us about MUFON and about your UFO investigating uh, before we get into paranormal? Anything else uh, you want to share? We are always looking for members. Uh, you can go to uh, www.mufon.com. You can go to join. Mm -hmm. and uh, you you can sign up everything there. We're also always looking for field investigators. I get a lot of people like contact me and go, I want to become a field investigator. I want to become a field investigator. Right. And I just always have to refer them to the way that it is, is you have to become a member first. Right. And you're assigned to the state that you are in. Uh, So uh, you become a member, you take a test every um FI or field investigator is a certified by taking the exam. MUFON is always trying to educate us and be that way. A lot of people, um, I, I find it funny. Uh, we get investigators that come on board, and I don't think they understand what investigation is. It takes a lot to be an investigator. A lot of hours, a lot yeah, of dedication. Yeah, it's a lot of hours. And, it, and, and it's a nonprofit organization. Exactly, So people yeah, have to stuff. realize that you're doing this because you have a passion for it. So exactly. It's not a job. Exactly. It's it's something that you have a passion for. And by the way, no. I am a I am a MUFON member, and I really enjoy getting um, you know the journal and the 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 TV part of the MUFON TV. I think right, really really right, good. yeah. It, so. MUFON's got a lot of good things going. They, yeah, they have did. had a you know they have had bad raps before. But look, folks, everybody has it. You look anywhere, it's, it's always happening. We try to keep it straight. Yeah. And uh, we we do the best that uh, we can do. And uh, we get out the information out. It's a great source of uh, being able to look for, see what's going on, and understand it. Uh, but when you're in the field, that's a lot different. It, it's it, it's a fun thing. So please, if you're interested in it, join. Do not. I'm sorry. I'm going to say this too. <laughs> please don't. Become a field investigator just so you can have an ego trip and go, hey, I'm a field investigator. Yeah. And use it in another way. I yes. hate that. And I see that every once in a while. I, I agree and with they're you. They're so far that. away from it. It's ridiculous. Well, people don't understand how many hours of dedication you have to put into an investigation. I mean, you're you're researching. You're taking, you know, interviews. You're taking notes. You're, you're looking up stuff. And exactly. it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, so exactly. that was, no, that was a good disclosure there. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> don't become a field investigator if you don't want to put the time in because You're right exactly you know, yeah. it is time it is time consuming it, it takes is a lot. well you've been doing gosh speaking of time let's Uh-oh. let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about how many years you've been doing UFO and paranormal investigating since 1976 correct since 1976 yeah wow. I was I was very fortunate enough to, uh, I was in the radio for a while. And uh, and you have was, that radio voice, Barry. Well, thank you. You have the radio <laughs> voice. <laughs> but we, we were doing uh, radio. I got sent to uh, an interview, to interview a gentleman at Case Western Reserve. Uh, and um, I interviewed uh, this gentleman. Isn't it terrible? I'm trying to I'm sitting here going, now, what the heck was his name? <laughs> See, uh, when I started, I used to have black mustache and all that oh, no. stuff. And now... <laughs> <laughs> the black mustache is now gray. Right, you know. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All that stuff is all going, going it's all away. Going it's, you, away. Know, you start talking about, you know his name, like the best thing in the world, and all of a sudden you're gone. Oh, crap. Now what am I going to do? Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll blame it on the coffee. We're going to blame right, it on the exactly. coffee. Right, exactly. Have another drink. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah, exactly. More bourbon, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're killing me. All but, right. Uh, anyway, uh, I interviewed him and he invited me to uh, 
uh, a ghost hunt. Oh, cool. And that's how I got started with it, and I really enjoyed it. I had a really nifty uh, recorder at the time, and because it was for the radio station, it was a Morantz double set recorder. He had problems with his uh, sound technician at that time, and he asked me if I'd go along and bring the recorder. Oh. And so he did. I mean, back at that point, when if you didn't use that kind of stuff, you were using reel to reel. I mean, it's amazing how the field just changed and all the equipment's come back and everything else. But, you know, as I get older and been through all of it and tested all this type of different equipment and everything else, I still just like sitting in the house and just waiting and, and just listening. Be and and just listen. using this stuff, you know, using a, your mm-hmm. senses, using a recorder, uh, possibly spirit communications with a ghost box or something like that. And uh, it's it's just fun. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, enjoyable. it is. It really is. You know, one of the things I, I always think is kind of cool is uh, just putting some flour or something on the floor and then just see if there's any, you know, footprints yeah, we, or, you know, something that's really a, basic. You don't have to yeah. spend thousands of dollars. You don't have to spend now. thousands of dollars. No. And sometimes it's best to do it. But, it's you know, if you sit down and you listen and you do it. You know, I always tell people they, they're trying to get into it. Remember that 80% of this stuff is research. You know, you want it when you go to a place, research it. You know, we do a tremendous amount of residentials and helping people. What's the, the name of your, can you tell our uh, audience what the name of your paranormal team is? Oh, certainly. The name of the paranormal team is Night Stalkers Paranormal Night Stalkers. Research Team. Okay. Uh, we've been around for over 10 years now. And uh, we've all had different teams. And obviously, you know, I've had a few different teams that have been with different teams throughout the years. Yeah. Uh, and also been an independent investigator. And we all do the same thing. Uh, it, we, a team is something that's really enjoyable because it's special, isn't it? Yes, each person becomes has a certain uh, value to that team, right? You know, and when you get that correct mix, it's wonderful. Things really click. And, and what I've noticed, great evidence right? right. And what I've noticed in my paranormal investigating is each person in the team brings their own special skills or gifts. I mean, Excellent. you might have somebody that's psychic. You might have somebody who is an empath. I mean, you, you start to bring these people together, and then next thing you know, you've got a full circle of paranormal investigating just in the people on your team. So yes. it, it's cool. It really Excellent is. point, and that's what we have, and it's a family. You know, we are a family, and we do it uh, to the ninth degree as a family. Uh, you know, there's no ego here. It's just nice talk as paranormal. Oh, yeah, no ego. It's you got to leave the ego you know, at the door. So Yeah, that, that's one of the p- things that people will have a problem with. It's just not the Barry Gaunt show. It's not anybody else's <laughs> show. It's just, show. Yeah. You know, it's just... <laughs> Yeah. It's just us doing what we do best exactly. and what we like to do. You and know? you do and a great job at uh, the museum that you are a part of, the Octagon Hall Museum. Let's talk about Thank the you. Octagon Hall Museum. First of all, super cool looking building. I think we have a couple of pictures uh, that we can uh-huh. show of this Octagon Hall Museum. It's beautiful. I mean, it, uh, there, there's a nice older picture of it. Um, t- tell us about it, the, the history. Well, and- you know, we have a lot of history with it. The hall is an eight side. Uh, building it's an octagon it's only one of four that are left in the country still standing that is a wow. pure octagon it's a three-story octagon you'll see that it, it has a basement a main floor and an upstairs it also has a cupola on top of it uh, we rebuilt the cupola first of the few first pictures that you'll see was after uh, a lightning strike of the house when it burnt the cupola off it oh. took us a few years, like 90, oh, <laughs> to, to actually rebuild it. They took it off, and then uh, but the house is uh, now the cupola is back on top of the house. And I think you'll see some pictures with the with the cupola on it. Okay. Uh, but it, it the, the history is so deep uh, in it. It goes back to uh, antebellum times, which is pre Civil War. That means that it is. Uh, Right, house. right. Andrew Jackson for, called. Well, yeah, right, right know, for it, paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> quite right, but because yeah. of all the tragedy and everything else, we'll get right. into that. Because yeah. you know, it, it was built in 1847. Uh, it's 173 years old. Wow, it's a beautiful building. It has an architecture behind it. It has Civil War history. 
It has tragedy of families, and we try to keep it as a working uh, piece of history to tell uh, its own story. We let people get right up close to, uh, you know, when you walk into a building, some of these museums you have now are roped off. Oh, yeah, they show you the off. nice stuff. Right. You look, get a look in, and you go, oh, isn't that nice? Well, yeah, we encourage you to there. come in and, <laughs> yeah, and sit in, look at it, get up close, and, and, and see it. We have a lot of Civil War uh, active things and a lot of things that are period to the period of the 1850s uh, and throughout the Civil War. So and, the so property, and, it, and it's in Franklin, right? It's in Franklin, it, it Kentucky? Is, it is in Franklin, Kentucky. Uh, it's just about, oh, maybe 50 minutes north of Nashville on I-65, off of I-65. It's about 20 minutes uh, south of Bowling Green, Kentucky, where the Corvettes are. It's very easy to come. We get a lot of Corvette people that come down and they do their tours and they go on their uh, uh, rides and they stop in and see us. Cool. Uh, you know, the paranormal part of it is was a surprise. The building, we're a nonprofit, 501C. Uh, it was set up so that we could save history. You know, we yeah. wanted to be able to save the history stuff. Unfortunately, museums and everything don't do a big deal, especially one that's just uh, not owned by the state or the government. We just promote it. We all work for free for it, everything that we do. And even if we charge it's a donation to help bring uh, and upkeep the home and keep it up, up as much as we can to save our history. Uh, but it didn't make, it doesn't, you know, all of a sudden we're in there and uh, Billy Bird, the director, uh, had a moment when uh, he didn't believe in the paranormal. He oh, was really? a paranormal person and all of a sudden uh, he's uh, doing some upkeep on the home and a little girl appears. Oh. And he's like going, hello, honey, are you lost? Uh, are you here with somebody? Uh, wow. And tries to talk to him and then she just kind of goes, and disappears. Oh, wow. And that kind of made him a believer. Yeah, and it would. <laughs> yeah, it, oh, and over the years, it's just continued and continued. And there's so much tragedy there. You know, we have a family tragedy at the house. Um, I don't, I'll take, I won't take the time to do it, but people can definitely uh, look at the website, octagonhallmuseum.com and see some of the things about the history. If you're a ghost hunter and like to come down and hunt the house, we have a calendar there where you can actually uh, get online and book the hall. Oh, nice. So if I card. wanted to bring my team up, I could bring my paranormal team up and we could do an investigation and <laughs> and uh, just uh, you know do a little calendar, select the dates that we want to come. And is there a charge yeah. for that? I mean, or is Yeah, what we do is in that, in that case it is uh, if you bring... Uh, we have a minimum, you know. Uh, Octagon Hall has been on every TV show and every TV channel that I can think of in the past. Uh, there's been a lot of great investigators to come there and has, have, have done it. Uh, we don't charge a tremendous amount. We charge three hundred dollars minimum to have the house, and that's from three thirty in the afternoon until the next morning at uh, seven o'clock in the morning. And you get the house that whole night to be nice. able to investigate it. So could it. I could I boondock um, my RV out in the parking yes, lot? Yes, we have that happen a lot. We have people right. boondock our RVs, and I ask them what it is. So basically, you know, when I say that is that's up to six people. Oh, so wow. it's fifty dollars a person. If you bring eight yeah. to ten, then it's just an additional fifty dollars per each person. Cool. And I'll tell you one thing: I don't think you'll find a paranormal location that will be as more reasonable and be as effective uh, right. as doing and coming to Octagon Hall. Well, you sent um, us some pictures of some paranormal investigating at the Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah right, well, let, let's pull up one of those and let, let's talk about one of them. I, I don't care which one. We'll just uh, okay. pull one up. All right, uh, there's um, kind of a woman floating out of the wall. If you've got that one. Uh, uh, we're looking at one that has a uh, ladder and it looks like it has a fireplace mantle. Um <laughs> Oh, okay. Here's the one with the the, the lady, yeah, and the closet. Yeah. yeah. What is that? What What are we looking at? Oh, well, we here? got we got one in the closet. That's downstairs, and we have a an image of a person who, uh, that downstairs basement, and 
I'm trying to go around the hall and, and, and be the best that I can with it because there's so much stuff we can spend hours talking about the Octane Hall. It's that great. Uh, that is down in the bottom basement. Uh, that is where uh, Andrew Jackson Caldwell, the builder, had a storage area back there that was actually, uh, he would knock down the wall, put Confederate soldiers behind that wall, and then brick it back up again. What? And they would stay hidden in there. Yes, exactly. There are hiding spots in the hall. There's actually a oh, tunnel wow. in the hall. There are so many different things. I mean, we had 9,000 Confederate soldiers there, 5,000 Union soldiers. Uh, it is a lot of tragedy, a lot of things. Well, but uh, they're physical beings, and these are uh, some of the great things that you can see there at the Ockham Hall. We've, we've done. I've hunted the hall. We do novice hunts also which allow people that are not have a team to be able to come and spend some time with us. We've got one coming up on the 28th, and I've got to just start a new one on uh, April 11th. Uh, $50 per person. It's all, all the donation goes to save the hall. We don't take any money on it at all. It's all for the hall. And you spend the same thing. You spend the whole night with me and our team, and we go out and do investigations. So oh we do the gosh. ghost stuff. But uh, that picture is just a photo of uh, something that uh, was caught, and in fact, um, one of my investigators' uh, son was the first time that he was there, and he was using the camera. We were telling, him, "Make sure you take three pictures," and that's one of the ones he caught. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's an awesome. Thing. That's really cool. Yeah. Now we're looking at another one. Uh, I think that may maybe that is the guy that's got the camera there. I'm not really sure, but it looks like mm -hmm. there's two uh, aberrations there. Looks like there's okay. Two of them. Oh yeah, you're looking at the one that's uh, it's got a gentleman in a wheelchair, correct? Yes. 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 That is one of the most amazing photos ever. Uh, it's a nice talkers paranormal uh, photo. It was a great uh, capture. Uh, it was if you're in that room at that time, there was a camera going. Uh, it was an infrared. The first picture of it was actually an infrared. What you're looking at is a black and white, I do believe. Yes, it is. It uh, brings it up a little bit better. Uh, that's a real person in the wheelchair. Unfortunately, he has passed. God bless his soul. Oh. He was a good investigator. And there's also another one that's uh, to his uh, left. Left, yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, but in that picture, you will see... Uh, two, possibly three spirits forming. Uh, the camera was set to take pictures every eight seconds. It took 163 photos. Uh, we knew something was going on right away because your ears were popping. Mm -hmm. The electromagnetic field was just spiking. Your skin was crawling. You knew something was. As soon as we were done with it, we immediately had a group there. We took it out, put it in a computer, and started looking at it, and you could see them forming. Then you have that picture, and then you have them disappearing. And two full-body apparitions, we believe them to be female. I was going to say they look female. but yeah, uh, They're semi-floating. They don't have any legs. But one of the coolest things that I've ever seen about it, you know, and one, uh, that's like the Holy Grail, full-body apparitions, uh, yes. yes. Seeing two of them together is very unusual. <laughs> you know? and, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then what's really strange is that if you look at one of the, the picture, yeah, the we have a close up. Actually, yeah, we have a close up. The lady up. is actually holding uh, a, an inanimate object, which is a shepherd cane, and she has that in, in her hand. She's actually one of them is actually leaning on a shepherd's cane. Wow. Which is. It's totally, totally bizarre. Oh but my it's gosh! A great photo. Any great any photo. speculation as to who they might be? I mean, uh, I believe that it was may have been his uh, second wife, his second uh, wife. Okay. Harriet, and one of her uh, servants or handmaiden. Oh, probably, worked with her. yeah. So how yeah, many people have lit? How many people like would you say have lived there or occupied the hall over oh, the years? Well. Ocean Hall, one of the strange things about Ocean Hall is it's only had two owners. Oh, okay? only well, two Hall. owners? Oh, okay. Right, exactly. It's all, well, let's say two families. Well, okay. Uh, yeah. The uh, first owner was Andrew Jackson Caldwell from 1847 all the way up until 1920. He dies in 1866 and becomes his wife's Harriet's. She sells it in 1918 to Dr. Williams from Nashville. 
He comes and lives in it until 1954. Uh, he has it to his wife and his niece. Uh, his niece uh, couldn't obviously take care of it. They started putting it all together. And they started running the property, and it became rental property for a while. They had a real hard time uh, keeping rental people. Can you imagine that? <laughs> no, I can't imagine. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, so there's a lot of old stories about that. Oh, I bet. But, yeah. 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 Let's uh, let's run a video. We've got a video here. Um that is pretty cool, I think, that you shared with us. What, what well, you got two like? cool videos. One of them was the most darn, darndest for this thing that I still have to wrap my head around, but uh, <laughs> we'll see what you... Okay, the door is shutting yeah. in this video. Oh, well, my gosh. Yeah. This is actually a video of... Uh, we have camera systems in it. We watch the camera, and obviously, we're not always in the hall all the time, but uh, the, the cameras are for both to catch paranormal and for security purposes. So, in the, uh, early one morning before we we're all there, guess what happens? Jeez. You know, you hear a, in, in this video, you hear a boom like that, and all of a sudden, you'll see the door go. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it looks like it's about It six... closes and it makes like a bell ring. Yeah, 6.28 yeah. in the morning, it says on the uh, yes. clock. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and believe me, we're not there till 9. <laughs> You're not there till 9, so nobody did that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's yeah. great footage. Yeah. yeah. But, but it is super. And the other one we put up is, is really... Uh, a great one. Yeah, we just uh, have we just have the one. Barry. We just have the one. Yeah, we'll have sorry. to send you one because yeah, one of the best the videos. One. That, one of the you know, if you don't mind me talking about this one. No, thing go, ahead, go ahead. Really screwed my mind up, and it still does to this day. I haven't been able to pin. Uh, it actually scares us. Uh, it scares me because I worry and concerned about the hall. Because what actually happened was uh, at three o'clock in the morning, uh, a candle opera that did not have a candle in it actually lit no are you serious it lit, lit on its own lit on its own Ooh. we actually are watching we actually watched it on the video and it actually snuffs itself out what? and then and then it lights back up again <laughs> Not once, but twice. Twice, twice, and then it goes out again. Oh, jeez! And and I'm like going, Ooh, that's far. That is <laughs> actual far. Well, when we get there, you know what the really weird part about it is? Oh, that wasn't weird enough yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get to. I mean, that was weird. So, but when you look down by where the candle opera was sitting, there was wax on the floor. No. Melted wax on the floor. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's what I sound like going. Ah yeah. How did that happen? Oh you know? my gosh. So, oh wow. Yeah. But you know, it's it's that's the kind of thing that I think I'll bring. But it scares the heck out of you because you're like going, if they can bring or start fire. Fire. If they can start they can a fire. Burn, yeah, they can burn the house down. They can do anything else that they want to do. So we try to keep them happy. Yeah, <laughs> in, in, into the fire, right? The radio show, into right, the fire. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, you know what, when, but when you see that kind of stuff, and we examine that thing over and over again, and uh, one of the hard things about it, it's, it's silver, and it looked like a welder's arcade. That's wow. how much energy was in it. it. You know, most time when you light a candle, you can go in there and you can scrub it off yeah, and everything right. else. No, this actually put like a weld onto it. So whatever it had, had enough energy to be able to go. Wow! No, that was a powerful. Look, yeah, that yeah, was a powerful actually, entity. Yeah, it actually looked just like. I mean, it was above candle opera. You could actually see the reflection on the back on the door behind it. So wow. it was quite. A, Fight the video. Oh. I'll, well, I'll tell you what, though. I'll try to send it to you because I'd love to have your thoughts on it. <laughs> yes. I want to see it. Sign me up. I want to see this. Man, I can't yeah. watch it at night, though, because I won't sleep. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness gracious. Alive. All right. Well, that that's pretty cool. Um, so would you have to say that's like your all-time favorite uh, paranormal event that's happened at the Octagon Hall, or is there a different? Well, I've one? had so I've had so many of them, you know, and it's funny. Uh, I've actually been run out of the hall 
lot of people don't like to talk about that, but that's just the way it is because what we do, uh, fear of flight, the fear of flight comes on you when, you know, you get scared or something happens to you, your body goes, hey, this isn't right. Yeah. And unfortunately, your feet are going to get up and move. Yeah. I mean, I could be the toughest guy in the world. And then at other times, I can sit there and sit in a chair and watch him walk right up to me and go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah. oh, okay. Okay, big deal. Oh, okay. my gosh. <laughs> but, so, so what spooked you that made you run out that uh, I got I to know? I got to ask. Well, yeah, well it, was, it, it was really funny. I had broken my foot, and I was in there doing some work, and I was at the end of the table. And I hear this very weird noise going on, and I was like, well, what the heck is that noise? And I got up and started looking around, and I looked over like this, and the next thing I know, there is a full-body apparition of a soldier with half of his face missing. Wow. And uh, he had uh, suspenders on, a white T-shirt buttoned down, um, you know, the old-fashioned style, but not saying gray uh, wool pants. I got in just a few seconds when I saw, I got to see the full money of him. Oh, wow. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm holding something in my hand. And I'm like going, oh, hell no. And I just took off going. And I remember I had a broken foot, and I think I made it out to the uh, on the back portion about two seconds flat. And broken, broken <laughs> foot and all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So okay. you just turn around and you kind of go, oh. But, you know, there's times when the energy gets so thick at Octagon Hall and so many different yeah. things happen there. And, any you negative? Uh, you, you sometimes get a little negative en entities in there, you think? or I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, we do, because you have yeah. to remember something, that we have people coming there all the time. Right. And, you know, the Octagon Hall is an Octagon-shaped building. It was a Masonic building. He was involved in the uh, Masonic Lodge. Masonic Lodge, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, and so... Uh, some people say it's built like a, a spirit trap, and when oh, uh, trap. other That's people other people come there and uh, they're there, their energies and everything else can tend to stay Escalate. there. Well, and also right. maybe escalate, right? Escalate it, or else something will leave them and want to stay there, choose to stay there. You know, and it's just oh. that kind of kind of thing. So we deal with that. Uh, you probably I not not. I don't want to get too gory, but I mean, you probably have body parts of different soldiers and stuff, you know, in that area. Obviously, from the yes. Yeah, well, that... one of, yeah. One of the things about the property is, is that uh, yes, we had nine thousand soldiers that were Confederates. They uh, went through before they got there. They were in Bowling Green, and there was this uh, artillery attack. Uh, no gun battle or anything else, they just shelled, they took the high ground and shelled Bowling Green for three days. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and you know how shelling and everything else can do to you. So what was left of the Confederate forces, they picked up their wounded and they moved down oh. south. Yeah. Uh, so as they did, they found the Octagon Hall. It had rail access. It had everything that they would need to it. It had an Octagon-shaped building. If you were looking at it, you could see from every window. And from the cupola, you could see way up there. So uh, it is a beautiful sight. It is, it is a high building. And when you get up different floors, you can see that you have all every window, every side of the house, eight sides with all windows in it. Yeah, it's you get perfect. an opportunity to see everything. So. Right, right. Oh, I want to uh, come up there. I, I got to make a field trip to Kentucky, my friend. <laughs> oh, darling, you are you're, you're welcome at any time, any time, please. It'll, yeah, it'll you check You have an open mark. invitation. Yeah, it'll yeah, check it'll, mark everything off for me, my UFO fascination and my paranormal. It'll just check them all off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, yeah, we'll just go ahead and what we'll do is we'll plan, uh, plan a few days. We'll do a ghost hunts we'll go out and look for bigfoot because oh you do uh, I actually, hunting too oh man yeah, I'm so in. yeah. well and, you know and it's funny and you know uh we've had uh we have several a picture reports. of that barry barry not to yeah. touch you but we got a picture of your bigfoot that you sent yeah um, it's a, yeah where where was that is that out there at uh that's a Octagon Hall. That's a footprint that was found on the back of Octagon Hall. Oh wow! Uh, we had an experience out there. We started looking for it. It's a footprint that was found. Uh, I have another video of. Well, I have. I put trap cameras out and everything else. I do have some trap cam uh, 
shots uh, that are quite interesting. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, the hall has everything. It has a little bit of everything. It is a magical place. It's it is magical. Place, so, man, oh man. You know. Can you believe we only have two minutes left of the show? No. No, it's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair. It's not. I know. It's just like when I'm on your show, it's like time just flies. Yeah. We're talking yeah, about our stories and everything. Um, so let, let's just circle yeah. back uh, with this last minute and a half or so. Let's circle sure. back to UFOs and uh, and intergalactics extraterrestrials what has been your favorite case so far on ufos with mufon what's your favorite case oh there's several of them yeah. I, that's not even fair that's not fair i mean i've done so many of them yeah i mean and there's a lot of it and it's hard hard to put that way i always look at you know cases i don't know it's not mufon is eric mitchell's case you know, I love Eric Mitchell's case. Yes. We Hi, Eric. Eric. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's, he's a good <laughs> and, guy, too. We're going to get him on the show sometime, too. So. Oh, it, it, he, he's he's a great person. And, you know, uh, I'm working on one also because it deals with abductions, it deals with the crafts, it deals with all the stuff, plus his physical changes. And I've also got another one in uh, Kentucky that's uh, over uh, on uh, eastern Kentucky. That's the same way. It's another abduction case. And in fact, even that case would makes it, I had a personal interaction where I had missing time when I was visiting the area that this witness and I both went to. So we both had an experience and it became another type of situation where, oh, call another investigator. Yeah. Cool. Part of it. So. Oh my gosh. Well, I tell you what, Barry, I got to get you back on the show sometime soon because we need to talk another whole hour about that stuff. Um, but you, you got to. a lot. Yeah, you got a lot going on. You got your show, you've got your investigations and everything. And, and it's just been such a joy. Plus, you're my West Virginia buddy. So that's there you go. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to plan a trip up to Kentucky. I'm telling you, I'm coming up there. But until I'll next week, uh, I, I thank you so much. Until next week's episode, I want everybody to keep looking up.